Welcome to Fantastic History. I'm Clay. I'm Sarah. We're a husband and wife duo who enjoy telling each other about amazing events, people, and mysteries throughout history. So, Sarah, yeah. today I'm going to uh, do an episode that is similar to an episode I've done uh, in the past. Okay. In the past, I did an episode called Bizarre Disappearances. You son of a bitch. Now, hold on. Now, hold on. I know that I made you very upset with that episode because, listeners, I'm turning to you now, <laughs> because Sarah doesn't like things that don't have an answer, things that uh, have ambigu- an ambiguousness that can't be explained. So that episode ended with a lot, with more, <laughs> many more questions than answered. <laughs> Than answers, which was frustrating. Is that fair to say? I am still actively angry about it, as you may have just noticed when I immediately started cursing at you. Well, this episode is a little different because this episode deals with people who disappeared but then reappeared. Oh. And, but because I do love mysteries, there are pieces of their story that. Ha- that are still unexplained or have aspects that are debatable or strange. Okay. So there is an ending to these stories. Okay. But there still are questions that I think that you and the listeners will find intriguing. And perhaps we can figure out what is the more likely explanation as we go along. I'll allow it. Okay. So I have two people who I'm going to tell your story of and... Um, we'll see which one is the best. Okay. The best of the worst. Oh, God. Okay, so the first story starts on February 2nd, 2018, where 49-year-old Toronto firefighter Constantinos Danny uh, Philippides was skiing on Whiteface Mountain at the Whiteface Mountain Ski Resort located in the Adirondack Mountains in northeastern New York. During the day... Uh, he was enjoying the slopes with his friends and wife, and he decided to uh, leave them to retrieve his cell phone. But he didn't return to the slopes or his room. So after a while, his friends and his wife began looking for him, figure out where he went. And this led to um, them calling the police, and the police uh, started a massive search. But Danny couldn't be found. After he left to retrieve his cell phone, he, he, he seemed to just disappear without a trace. Hmm. Six days later, his friends and his wife are still in New York looking for him. His wife is with a search party at Lake Placid when she receives a phone call from an unknown number. Oh. She answers, and it's Danny. He seems confused on the phone, disoriented, but is able to tell her where he is. Now, he's not at the ski resort anymore. He's not in the Adirondacks anymore. He's not even in New York anymore. He's in Sacramento, California. Sorry? And you said six days later? Six days later. Huh. He's in Sacramento (laughs) on the other side of the country, 4,500 miles away. She tells him to call 911 and tell the police that he's a missing person, which he does, and the police are able to locate him. And he is really in Sacramento. And he's wearing his ski clothes. What? And his gear and even carrying his helmet. What? Now, not only that, but he had acquired a new iPhone. Uh, And he was carrying his credit card and $1,000 in cash on him. And he had received a fresh haircut. (laughs) Okay. Okay. But he was clearly in a disoriented state, Mm -hmm. at least at this point. So police took him to a hospital for evaluation. Now, Danny claims to have some vague memories between the moment he left his group and the moment he became lucid on the streets of Sacramento. But much is lost. He claims that as he was walking back to the ski lodge, he lost consciousness somehow. Doesn't know how, but he lost consciousness. He says that he reached the ski lodge um, at some point, but it was empty. And now investigators determined that this was likely the kids' building at the lodge that oh. he that he found, it, but it would have been closed. Right. So if he was trying to get into it, he wouldn't have been able to, mm-hmm. and that might have caused a lot of confusion for whatever was going on with him. So confused and dazed, 
Danny just began to wander. And unable to find where he was going, he recalls uh, riding in a big rig truck, like possibly an 18 wheeler. As to why he hitchhiked or was picked up at all, we have no idea because Danny doesn't remember why he did this, and the driver has also never come forward. Hmm. So this is very strange because this driver took what we assume is a very disoriented man 4,500 miles across the country and dropped him off in California. Yeah, that didn't happen. Danny recalls little details like getting car sick and driving through Utah, but not a lot else. After arriving in Sacramento, Danny purchased the phone with his credit card and searched Whiteface Mountain because this is what he could remember and recall. But his but um, he didn't remember his wife's phone number until the next day hmm. in which he called her and they found him. As of today, Danny claims some, a few more memories have returned, but most are still lost. The important ones are lost. Mm-hmm. There are a few theories as to what's, what happened. The first is that Danny fell and had a concussion, which led to this amnesia. Right. But typically, amnesia, amnesia um, doesn't last for days. six days. Yeah. Another theory is that he entered a fugue state, mm-hmm. which would explain a few things, such as the length of the event and why some people would have not noticed that something was seriously wrong with him, because people in a fugue state can appear normal even if they aren't, Hmm. until they start to become lucid. Another possibility is that he had a temporal lobe epileptic episode. Oh. Or maybe he just made the entire thing up. Right. Because we don't know. If he had a fugue state, there's really no way to to know for sure unless... Mm -hmm. You know, he tells us, or we we interpret what he's telling us, but if he's making it all up, we really wouldn't know. And as for making it up, that introduces some other questions like, why? Right. You know? So as far as Danny, that's all we know, really. He had this experience, he showed up in Sacramento, and we don't know how or why. Hmm. So I'm going to, I want to... Go ahead and be on the record as saying, I don't think he made it up. Okay. Because he was, I mean, six days later. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you were like purposely running away from your life, six days and you're giving up, but you went to all that effort. Like I, that just doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? And doing it in such a strange way, like just off, uh, just during a vacation. Right. Like and, oh, I just need to go grab my phone or whatever it was. Like now, it would make it would make sense if you were, if you had if we if we took a vacation to somewhere like Canada or mm-hmm. somewhere 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 far enough away. Yeah, and one of us decided to disappear. It's a pretty good place to disappear because it's somewhere that's you know not near us. But he didn't disappear and stay in you know New England area. He mm-hmm. disappeared and went somewhere completely different. Right. So it's 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 bizarre. Well, and also to be... Now, you would think, like, if he had packed, like, a bunch of clothes, somebody would have noticed something, like, there's an extra bag, or he packed way too much for his trip than he normally does, or something. But if he had planned to do this, like, he would have stuff, right? And, and he probably wouldn't be dressed in the same clothes. The exact same clothes. Unle- six un- days un- later. Un- unless he planned to come to in Sacramento for some reason and planned everything out. But again, you got to take a lot of leaps. Yeah, it's just, yeah, if the plan was always to like run away and disappear yourself, I feel like as soon as you're out of sight, you're shucking those clothes, right? You're throwing yeah. them away somewhere or you're, you're just leaving them in the woods to like add to the mystery or you're burning them or something because you're not ever going to need them again. It's 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 weird. Yeah. It's it's pretty weird. Um, so we don't know what mm. happened to Danny. But whatever happened, the story has a happy ending. Danny yeah. was found alive after he went missing, and now he lives a normal life. And he had that fresh haircut. I mean, that's yeah. great. <laughs> yes. Now, the next story does not have such a happy ending. Oh, good. Lawrence Joseph Bader was 30 years old when he went missing from Akron, Ohio, on May 15, 1957. 
At the time, he was married with three children and one more on the way. He had a good job as a kitchen appliance salesman and enjoyed archery and fishing, which is good because on the day of his disappearance, um, that's what he was doing. He was fishing. He went to Cleveland to rent a motorboat and spend some time fishing on Lake Erie. But three hours later, a severe storm hit the lake, Mm. and Bader didn't make it home that night. The following day, his boat was found on a nearby beach, lightly damaged, but uh, Larry Bader was gone. The Coast Guard stated that if Larry had fallen overboard during the storm, they were pretty sure that he would have drowned. Yeah. Now, three years passed without any new developments, so police were forced to declare that Larry Joseph Baker was dead. Wow. His wife received a $40,000 life insurance policy, but she was still left with three children to raise alone. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, four states away in Omaha, Nebraska, there's another man named John Johnson who went by the name Fritz. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) John Johnson, but call me Fritz. I just want to make sure that we've all heard that. Yes. Okay. His nickname was Fritz. Yeah. Not John, not JJ. We're going with Fritz. He liked Fritz. All right. Or someone liked Fritz and started calling him Fritz. (laughs) So it, it, Fritz it was. Now, Fritz was a peculiar but well-liked guy. You think? He signed his checks, Fritz. Oh, my God. And even dated them by season, like summer. Oh. Uh, he, <laughs> he drove an old hearse with a mattress and pillow in the back for dates. Oh, hell yeah. He even performed wild stunts like sitting on top of a flagpole for 15 days for charity. <laughs> this bizarre charismatic behavior made him a, a bit of a local celebrity and even more so when he began his career as a tv broadcaster on omaha television and working part-time as an advisor for archery uh, companies but he was also married with two children mm-hmm. now these stories converge on february 2nd 1965 fritz is at a chicago Fritz is in Chicago at a sporting goods convention performing for his company or the company that he works for at a demonstration. One of the people in attendance is Suzanne Pika, who happened to be the niece of the deceased Larry Bader. She was there and she was watching this archery demonstration, but she was more interested in Fritz because he was the spitting image of Larry Bader. Sorry. Fritz had a small mustache And he also had an eye patch due to a malignant tumor that took his eye. But she could tell, even with those those differences, she could she could see that he he was he had the exact resemblance of Larry Bader. So she approached him after the demonstration and said, "Aren't you my uncle Larry?" And Larry laughed and sorry, not not Larry. Ah, Fritz. Oops. (laughs) Fritz laughed and said politely said no. I'm sorry, it's not me. But Suzanne was very insistent. So she made sure that night to call her uncles, who were Larry's brothers, and say, this guy looks exactly like Larry. So they flew to Chicago. So how many years has it been at this point? Uh, It's been eight. Whoa, okay. Eight years, Mm. if, 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 if my numbers are correct. So the brothers come to Chicago, and when they see him, they are also convinced that it's Larry Bader. But again, Fritz politely denies, he's polite but firm, that it's that he's not Larry. He had never been to Akron, Ohio, much less grew up in the area and had a family there. But the brothers had come, they, they had decided a way that it could be tested. Larry's Navy service records with his fingerprints. Mm. They had them. So they said, uh, uh, they, they, they asked Fritz, would you go with the, to a police station with us to have your fingerprints taken and compared with Larry Bader? Now, Fritz, as you would, as you would be, I'm, I'm sure, was a bit annoyed. Yeah. But perhaps also sympathetic to the situation. So he agreed. Well, and this is also like, how else are you going to get these people off your back? Like, yeah, I'll give you my fingerprints. You'll see it's not me. And then we can move on. Yeah. And and, and probably thinking, you know, this will put an end to this mm-hmm. and um, and put these people at ease. Even though it's annoying to me. Right. I'll, 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 I'll do this for you. So he went and got his fingerprints taken and the results came in the next day. Fritz Johnson was Larry Bader. <laughs> 
And in a quote from him, it says, It was like a physical shock. Up until that moment, I had no doubt that I was not Larry Bader. But when I heard it, it was like a door had been slammed and somebody had hit me right in the face. Four days after Larry Bader had gone missing is the day that John Johnson stepped into Ross's Steakhouse in Omaha looking for a job. What? He claimed that he had recently been discharged from the Navy and was traveling the country. He had always claimed that he had memories of being John Johnson, raised in an orphanage, being in the Navy for 14 years, etc. Right. And you said that Larry was in the Navy. Larry was also... Well, yes, Larry was in the Navy, but he I, I don't think he was in the Navy for that long. Right. Okay. And then uh, here's another quote from Fritz Larry. He says, my God, don't you understand? All of a sudden, I find out that 30 years of my life never happened. You see, I really do have 30 years of memory as Fritz Johnson. What am I supposed to do with those 30 years? Just throw them out the door? Oh, God. Fritz Johnson suddenly found himself with two legal wives. Oh, boy. (laughs) The life insurance policy that was paid to his first wife was now null and void. Oh, that sucks. And it needed to be paid back. Oh, that sucks. He was advised by a lawyer to submit to some psychological testing, which he did for several days, but doctors were not able to determine if he experienced some sort of dissociative amnesia from what happened on that night in Lake Erie. Or if he was just making the whole thing up. I'd be more likely to believe that this one was fake than the first one. Just because he did like completely cut ties and years went by. Yeah. But I still am not really sold on that being what happened either. Well, things for Fritz got worse. Mm. KETV fired him. Well, yeah. His second wife left him Uh uh-huh yeah he found himself working as a bartender again with almost all of his paycheck going to child support of his two families oh god because at this point he had six children oh boy now what i didn't mention earlier is when fritz was known as larry bader he was in severe debt oh i see okay i take back what i said (laughs) would he have left his old life to embark on a new more exciting one in omaha a second chance of life. <laughs> Sorry, a more exciting life in Omaha. Let's just <laughs> sit with that for a second. Well, I did describe his life and it sounded you, a lot better. Oh, it sounded like it ruled. And plus that whole time he had an eye patch. Yeah. Well, no, not the whole time. Well. But. Still. Yeah. He's out there flagpole sitting with an eye patch <laughs> on. Like, yeah. He probably invented the jet ski. Like he's just out here party rocking. Amazing. So it seems it seems possible that he could have just walked away from his old life. But there's some things about that that seem strange. Because if he had done that, why did he live such a public life? Mm. Even becoming a television uh, personality and traveling around the Midwest. You, you would think if you wanted to yeah. live a second life, you would not do those things. Because they significantly increase the risk of being found. I could see, I mean, given that this is like very much pre-internet, being a a television celebrity in Omaha is not necessarily going to put you at risk with people in Akron. There's probably not a ton of crossover, but when you bring in the Midwestern tours, that's when I'm like, okay, guy. But maybe he just kind of got comfortable. Like, I've been doing this for however many years. Yeah, I'll take it on the road. It's certainly possible. And if he was lying, why did he submit to that fingerprint test that would clearly reveal Mm -hmm. everything? That's a good point. He could have just said, no, I'm not him, and bye, and leave, and probably never be seen again. But he voluntarily was found out. Right. Without, as far as I can tell, without much of, you know, a fight. So, I don't know. Well, I mean, I will say, Ed Kemper like purposely made friends with the police and would hang out with them in bars and make jokes about murdering women. And yeah. nobody bought it because it's like, oh, that's just Ed being Ed. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people that do crimes and get away with it for a time aren't necessarily also smart. And well, a lot of the times true. they feel like, well, I've gotten away with it for this long. Like I'm too good. You know, this is too big to fail. 
So, I mean, who knows? It's true. Now, unfortunately, we don't know the answer to this because the truth was revealed in 1965, but no one knew how little time they had to try and solve this mystery. Oh. Because Fritz Johnson slash Larry Bader died on September 16th, 1966, after his cancer reappeared in his liver. Oh, no. And a service was held in Omaha for Fritz, and he was buried in Akron as Lawrence Joseph Bader. So full amnesia is rare. Yeah. And full amnesia with false memories for over a decade Hmm. is almost unheard of. Unless you're watching Days of Our Lives. This is not really... Yeah. Yeah. But the only thing we know for sure about this is that on that stormy May night, Larry Bader did cease to be, Mm. whether intentionally or not. Dang. Yep. So I hope that was... That episode was a little bit less I'm infuriating. Not, yeah, I am not outraged. Good. At the moment. Good. Yeah. And I hope you aren't, listeners. <laughs> but thank you for listening and spending some of your time with us. Hope you found that story interesting. And if you did, please take a second to share our podcast and leave a, a rating and review and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening. Feel free to check us out on Twitter and Instagram for more content. We are fantastic h pod on both if you would like to reach us by email we are fantastic history pod at gmail.com until next week don't disappear Music.